I want to talk about power cables, right? There's controversy and there's been controversy for years about power cables. Some people label power cables in the audio industry as snake oil, while others spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a single power cable. That's crazy, right? At least I could never do that. But today I want to share with you guys uh, two new power cables. These are the first ever power cables I have ever made a video about because power cables are a personal kind of thing. But these two cables are powerhouse power cables. They're beautiful to look at, beautiful in construction, actually made a change in my system that I will tell you about. And one of these cables is $299. And one of them is $499 and actually has active noise cancellation built in. These are cables that look like $5,000 cables and uh, they come in at a very affordable price made by iFi. But before I talk about them, I want to share my one experience with a really high-end power cable. This was back many years ago and I was a power cable skeptic and in some ways I still am. Uh, but let me tell you this quick story. Uh, I was at my dealer's and he had received a Nordust Valhalla 2 cable in that was the wrong size for a customer. And it was something like a half a meter cable. It was very short. It was either a half a meter or one meter. I don't remember. I thought it was a half a meter. And he said, if you want it, I'll sell it to you at my cost. You know, if you don't like it, you could always resell it and get your money back easily. So I bought it and I was excited to try to see what this expensive power cable would do to my system. Now at the time, I did have a dedicated space. I think my system was in the $20,000, $25,000 range, which to me is pretty high end for an audio system. I know they go into the stratosphere, but for me, that's a big money system. So I get home and I take out the cable I had on my amp, which I believe was a Nordist Blue Heaven cable. I still have that cable today, powering an amp today. Um, and I replaced it with that Valhalla 2 power cable. I sat back, I queued up some tracks that I knew inside and out, and lo and behold, there was quite a difference. The sound was bigger, it was louder, it was clearer, there was more sparkle on top. And I said, how in the heck is a power cable doing this? It doesn't make any sense. But I am no audiophile scientist. I don't disassemble, put together cables. I don't know the science behind that. All I know is that there was indeed a difference. But even though I got it at dealer cost, that cost me a lot of money. And I felt guilty in a way of spending that so much on a power cable that I did sell it and I got my money back for it. And I went back to my blue heaven. But for me, my curiosity uh, it was solved, right? It did make a difference, and my system did sound different with that cable in it. Now, was it a, an improvement I liked? In some ways, yes, but I also liked the presentation with my Blue Heaven cable. Um, but ever since then, I have not delved into the high-end power cable market. Uh, I did try out some AudioQuest Thunder and Tornadoes a few years ago, and I felt they did deliver a little more slam and bigness to my system. But I also remember thinking, I don't know if this was worth the money because they were like a thousand bucks or something like that at the time. And to me, that's a lot of money to spend on a power cable, right? We get a power cable with most of our gear. You can buy a replacement for 15 bucks. Why spend a thousand dollars on a power cable? Even if it is making changes, I think it's a mental thing because we'll spend a thousand dollars on a DAC because it's a big hunk of metal and we're like, ooh, we can see this, we could look at it. A power cable we see as a power cable and we don't understand, like my mind doesn't comprehend a thousand dollar for a cable that normally costs $15. You know, I, I just don't get it. But that Valhalla 2 did in fact change the sound of my system. I recently received two brand new power cords from iFi. Now iFi makes some awesome stuff. I reviewed a couple of their DACs. One was $7.99, punched way above its weight. I wasn't in love with the looks and style of it, but the sound quality, I could not complain about. It also had some great features. I also reviewed their IDSD Pro signature, I think it was called, and that thing sounded amazing. It was their higher end DAC, 
but iFi makes some good quality stuff. They're also known for um, power products. They have a DC blocker, for example. Some people have DC on the line. My home, I have DC on the line. My voltage is way high. So I use a PS Audio power regenerator and that has solved all of my power issues. Even so, these two cables came into me. They're called the Nova and the Supernova. Now the Nova is described as iFi as the audiophile starter cable. Uh, for someone who's building a system and you've invested some money in your amp, your DAC, your speakers, whatever, your turntable, your CD player, whatever you're using, and if you're using all generic power cables, this cable is meant for you to really finish off the system and provide solid power to your gear. As a matter of fact, while I read the back of the box of the Nova, I'll show you some images of the Nova cable. It's a gorgeous cable for 299 bucks. Nova is the power cable for those starting out on their journey into the exploration of the impact of mains upon their audio system. Meet the Nova, a truly geometrically balanced cable designed for the starter audiophile. Bringing elements of design from the Supernova, the Nova also provides iFi's ground zero design to create a central core free of any magnetic fields. Combined with the shotgun ground, non-twisting and constant impedance, the cable achieves maximum protection from any magnetic field and has nil induction voltage. The result is vastly reduced system noise. The cable is built upon the same pure copper for excellent conductivity, impact resistant polymer casing for durability and gold plated pure copper connections for the best transmission possible. So my system is pretty noise free because of the power plant I use. But even so, I have noticed that the different power cables I use to feed the power plant do make small changes upon the presentation of the system. They're generally pretty small. But what I did was I first took the Nova, the, the starter cable, and I plugged it into my amp, which uh, right now I'm running a Dennis Hat Inspire 300 BV amplifier. It's gorgeous, requires sensitive speakers, but man, what a sound. Now, I didn't notice any difference between the stock power cable and the Nova on that amplifier, but that is a tube amplifier, and uh, I don't know if cables are really affecting that particular amp. So I then went to my DCS Lena DAC and I was using the stock power cable. I unplugged the stock, I plugged in the Nova and powered up the system again. And lo and behold, I did hear a difference. I heard a more warmth, uh, a warmer presentation, which in my system, I don't really need, but I get a lot of emails from people saying, my system sounds thin, there's no body, it's lacking uh, engagement, I'm not getting engaged with the music. Um, and those kind of systems you normally don't. If you have a thin sounding system, it's kind of hard to get engaged with it. Uh, I like sound with body and flesh and bone to the sound. Now what the Nova was doing, just plugged into my DAC, uh, it actually brought more warmth to the system and a little bit more um, of an expansive sound, a little bit wider sound stage than that stock power cable. So right then and there again, I knew this cable is making a change. Now my, si uh, my system is totally silent already, but iFi says this will reduce noise even further uh, in your system. So if you don't have a power conditioner, uh, if you just plug this cable in, you may notice that blacker background where music, uh, you'll hear more of the details of the music. That's what happens when we lower the noise floor in a system. We hear more details, uh, more spaciousness, right? It's almost like the sounds come from an inky black background when a good cable is used or a good conditioner to get rid of that noise because some of us have noise on the line. That's just a fact of life. So now moving on to the Supernova. This actually has active noise cancellation built into the cable. It's pretty cool. This cable is iFi's endgame cable as they call it. I'll show you a little bit of this cable as I read the back of the box. The Supernova is an end game power cable for your audio setup, featuring our active noise cancellation 2 technology. Actively eliminating noise across all frequency ranges across live, neutral, and earth, 
The cable is truly geometrically balanced, a first in the world of power cables. Using iFi Audio's unique ground zero design, the cable creates a central core that is free of any magnetic fields. The non-twisted central ground wire is surrounded by the live and neutral conductors as geometrically balanced pair double helix which protects the ground wire from any magnetic field. No induction voltage is created in the ground wire and therefore system ground noise is vastly reduced. Each individual power line has concurrent shielding so both internal and external RFI noises are minimized. Low inductance, low capacitance, and constant impedance are achieved for the entire cable. Constant impedance is achieved regardless whether the cable is bent or angled thanks to the fully symmetric and balanced design. Uh, the cable is insulated using a polymer matrix which is comprised of a high performing thermoplastic that is moisture resistant and ROHS compliant. So I took the so I took the Supernova and I replaced my AudioQuest Monsoon that has been feeding my PS Audio power plant and uh, I replaced it with the Supernova. Uh, I noticed a difference again. Again, a little more warmth, but I kind of liked what this one was doing feeding the regenerator. Now, a cable going into a regenerator should not make any difference at all. And I believe even PS Audio says this because what the generator is doing is it's regenerating all new power, right? So no matter what's coming in, what's coming out um, is regenerated power. So how could a cable make a difference? I don't know, but if you read the PS Audio forums, there are people who swear by different cables going into their power plant. I, one person even uses the Dragon cable from AudioQuest. I think it's called the Dragon, which is thousands of dollars uh, going into his power plant. So what I heard again was a little more warmth. So I wasn't sure how this was happening. So I went back to the AudioQuest Monsoon and it got a little bit more tipped up on top and that bass bloom at the bottom kind of went away. So, so what the iFi cables did for me was bring a little more solidity, a little more bass and a little more warmth to the system, which could be a godsend to some of you out there looking for that in your system. And this is the first video I've ever made on a power cable, and it'll probably be the last because um, some of them are just so overpriced, it's ridiculous. Now, I don't care what anybody buys. I don't care if someone spends $10,000 on a power cable. If you have a $100,000 system in a well-treated, well-set-up room, you know, and you want that kind of icing on the cake, go for it. I'm all in. But for those who are starting out, those who just have a more modest system, even those of you who have a system like me that is high end, um, but it's not ridiculous high end, right? Uh, power cables can make a difference to your system and it can be that cherry on top once you get everything else in line. A power cable is not gonna fix issues with your system. Uh, you wanna look to speakers and amps for that mostly, even your DAC. Cables again will fine tune the system and if you have an investment in, in you know, thousands of dollars in amps and DACs and speakers, 299 bucks to power them is not really uh, out of the ordinary. And another reason I like these, these cables is they are available on Amazon Prime, which means you can buy it, you can try it. If it doesn't work for you, you can send it back and get your money back. I like that because not everything in Hi-Fi is like that. Most dealers these days, or a lot of them, not all, have restocking fees and that can add up, right? you have to spend a fortune to ship these uh, products back. So I like the fact that you can just go to Amazon and buy them. I'll put links to them directly below if you wanna check them out. But again, these are the first power cables I've ever made a video for, probably the last. I think they are a great buy, especially for those of you building systems for the first time or getting into the cable thing and you don't wanna spend a fortune because this hobby can can really drain your wallet with all of the gear that's out there. And we wonder what this sounds like or what that sounds like. I've heard the big expensive power cables. Um, I have a couple of Nordos Blue Heavens here, which are not crazy priced, but they're I think three, $400. And they have made a difference to my system. 
Uh, these iFi cables look like $5,000 cables. They're built to a high standard. They look cool as heck, and they actually do help your system. What I found again is a little more base warmth, um, a little more warmth in general, and a more effortless kind of flow. Uh, the Supernova did bring a little bit more of an expansive uh, sound stage, but it's very minor. Cables aren't going to make a change a speaker or amp makes, but they do make a difference. So, and they lower that noise floor. Uh, if you have a noisy line, you might not even know it. They do lower that noise floor and help bring that music out to you better, which will get you more engaged so hope you enjoyed this i wanted to share this with you guys because i thought these were really fantastic products and uh, i will see you guys soon i'll have a review very very soon i'll see you then bye